Welcome to the Specialist Trading Weekly Forex Review for the week ending April 15th, 2011. Now by this time I'm sure many of you are aware that one of our best strategies for trading the Forex markets is strategy number five. It continues to do very well in the markets trading positions overnight and holding uh, positions basically by looking at daily charts. But what a number of you aren't aware of is that that strategy also works very well day trading. So we're going to show you some examples of how you can day trade using strategy number five. But before we begin, we ask that you please take a moment to view our disclaimer. I'm going to show you a lot of performance results from this past week, but remember we can in no way guarantee that any of these results will be repeated in the future. So please take a moment to view our disclaimer, and then we shall begin this week's Forex review. Okay, now as I said, we're going to be looking at strategy number five, but specifically designed for day trading or uh, intraday trading, I should say. Um, remember, the rules are exactly the same. In fact, nothing is changed because we're going to a smaller time frame rather than day charts. But uh, I'm not going to go into detail and in exactly explaining all the rules. I, I assume at this point, because you're watching this video, that you do know the rules for strategy number five. So please, if you're not familiar with them in detail, go back to the video learning section and watch the video entitled strategy number five. Uh, once you really understand it, come back here and watch this video again and see how it can be applied to intraday trading. Alright, so let's look at our first example here in the Australian dollar at a 30 minute time frame. Remember, we usually have been posting signals for strategy number five looking at daily bars only, but let's see how it works on an intraday time frame. Now the first thing we ask ourselves, as with all of our strategies, is where is price in relation to the buy-sell line? The buy-sell line being our 50 period simple moving average. As you can see, for all intents and purposes, price is below the buy-sell line. So this means we're only looking to go short. We're only looking for our proprietary setups to go short using strategy number five. And once we have that in mind, we're looking for our proprietary setup, we see that we have our first setup bar, proprietary setup bar, right here, circled in red. And what does this mean? Well, this means since we found the setup bar, we can go short if we trade one pip below that setup bar. All right? And this has to be on the very next bar only, the very ne next 30 minute bar. As you can see, we traded below, so we got short 1.0530. All right? And the great thing about strategy number five is that you know prior to entering the trade where you're going to be exiting because there, there is a fixed exit level with strategy number five. So you know if you want to take the trade or not, if you think it'll go to that level, if you use a little discretion, or if you want to take on the risk of this particular trade. Well, as you can see here, we decided to take the trade, went short at 105.30, and roughly in about an hour later, we exited at 1.0514. So we made about 15, 16 pips really quickly on the trade. Now coming into the next day here, we see that we had two more proprietary setup bars to go short, circled in red here. So on the very next bar, we entered short at 1.0462, and here was our first exit at 0.0440. So we made roughly about 20 pips on this trade, and then another setup here, 1.0444. Exited an hour later, 0.0424, roughly another 20 pips. So you can see how this really adds up in the smaller time frame, especially if you're catching a very nice trend. These are the exact same rules. Nothing has changed if, as if we were trading a daily bar. We've just transferred over everything into a smaller time frame. How about a 60 minute time frame? Let's look at the Euro dollar now, looking at a 60 minute time frame. But the first thing we always do is ask ourselves, where is price in relation to the buy sell line? Well, price was above the buy-sell line, but then we started to traverse a little below, but we have our proprietary setup bar right here. Once again, if you're not familiar with this setup bar, go to the video learning section and watch the video entitled Strategy Number 5, and you explain how to find this setup bar, circled in green here. This is our setup bar, meaning that we can go long the euro dollar if we trade one pip above, and it has to be on the very next bar. Well, here's the very next bar, and we traded obviously above, so we entered at 1.4434. And next, we come up with our a proprietary calculation for exit, which gave us a level at 44.85. So all you have to do is just simply enter an open order and keep that in place there. So we exited roughly about uh, three or four hours later 
at 44.85. We made nearly about 50 pips on balance. Just trading on an hourly time frame, the exact same rules. If we want to go out for a larger time frame, I know a lot of our students like to trade the four hour chart or the 240 minute chart. Let's look at that example using the dollar Swiss franc. We ask ourselves once again, firstly, where is price in relation to the buy sell line? Price is obviously well below. So this means we're only going to be looking for our proprietary setup bar to go short. We're not going to even consider going long. We're only looking for short sales. And here's our proprietary setup bar to go short right here, circled in red. Okay, this must meet all of the requirements to be a setup bar. Once again, those requirements are on the video uh, labeled strategy number five. So we can only go short once we trade one pip below this setup bar. And it must be on the very next bar, the very next 240 minute bar. As you can see, we traded below there, so we went short at 91.04. And we come up with our proprietary exit, which is 90.64. And just roughly in two bars, we made uh, about, uh, about close to 50 pips again. So the same exact strategy that we've been teaching you and giving you daily signals and nightly signals for, for daily bars, you can still employ and use on an intraday basis. But there are some things we want you to remember when day trading strategy number five for Forex. Remember, the minimum time frame that we would suggest is a 30 minute bar. I know a lot of students like to trade even down to five minute time frames. The strategy, because of the noise involved when you go down to these smaller time frames, is not as consistent. And if you remember, we're all about consistency. So we don't want this kind of, you know, whipsaw effect with our strategies. And, and uh, if you go down to these smaller time frames, uh, five minute, 10 minute, that seems to appear more often than not. So we would suggest because of the noise factor involved to stick with a minimum time frame of 30 minutes. Okay. Next, if you're going to be trading the smaller time frame, such as 30 minutes, you're going to have more signals. You're going to get a lot more signals as we saw in that first example with the Australian dollar. In one day, uh, you had roughly two signals, or I should say three, three signals. You're going to have more signals. There's going to be less risk because the bars are smaller, but you're also going to get smaller gains. So this is one thing we would suggest if you do not mind these smaller gains of maybe 10 to 15 pips, then that's fine. Trade a smaller time frame. Should you decide to go for a larger time frame, say a four hour bar chart or even more, well, you're going to get less signals. And because of the larger volatility, the larger ranges, there's going to be more risk. But if you have a winning trade, the gains will be larger. So this is one good thing to, to keep in mind. If, you, if you're not concerned with the risk involved, you have enough capital to, to cover it in your account, then go for the larger gains if that's what you're looking for. All right. But in closing, what we always suggest is just stick with one or two time frames that seem to work best for you. Don't trade the full gamut of any everywhere from a 30 minute to a 45 minute to an hour to an hour and a half to, you know, stick with one or two time frames that work well and just stick with them and just focus on those, especially in the beginning. Okay. There's no need to make things complicated. Make it simple. One or two time frames and just stick with them. All right. So let's recap this weekly Forex review. Strategy number five is a great strategy. It's been racking up this, some tremendous numbers on an overnight basis, looking at daily bars, but the same strategy can just as easily be applied to intraday trading. All right. So learn the strategy, go to the video learning section, watch the video entitled Forex strategy number five, learn all the rules, learn how to find the setup bar, learn how to come up with the proprietary calculations for your stop and for your exit levels. Okay. And then paper trade. Do not jump in head first. Paper trade for a while. Simply watch the trades unfold in real time and you'll learn a lot more. Our edge here is consistency. And the only way to get that edge is to really understand the process, how it unfolds in real time. So paper trade as often as you can. Should you have any questions concerning strategy number five or how to uh, intraday trade it or any other strategy than the numerous strategies we have for the Forex markets, please do not hesitate to email me at stephenprimo at specialisttrading.com. In closing, I ask that you take one last look at our disclaimer. I showed you the performance results from this past week using strategy number five on an intraday basis. But remember, we can in no way guarantee that any of these results will be repeated in the future. 
So as you're taking one last look at our disclaimer, should you have any questions concerning this or anything else on the website, please do not hesitate to email me at stephenprimo at specialisttrading.com. If not, have a nice, relaxing, enjoyable weekend, and we'll see you right back here next week. Bye-bye.